And uh, he has a very creative way that he goes about teaching people uh, about these matters. And I will ask him to come and tell us a little more. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Le Hello, everybody. Hello. What a great day. What a great event. Yes. Imagine this being in a place where the rain has been flooding, <laughs> the rain in the seas parted so that we could come today to help feed America and Connecticut kids in particular. Now what I would like to do first is that we've been sitting and talking and everything for a few minutes now, so I'm going to get you to put your hands together for me and we're going to clap. Can you do this? Yes. You're feeling kind of hungry, thirsty too. You open the cupboard, look for something to chew. You grab a bag of candy, another bag of chips, then you reach in the fridge for some soda and dip. You sit down on the couch, turn on your TV, or you chill at your computer with your MP3s. And all day long you're sitting on your big old butt, and you're looking at your stomach saying, man, I got a gut. <laughs> but how you look ain't the problem, Jack. It's just unhealthy being fat. Did you know that one in three Americans struggle with obesity? They got high blood pressure and heart disease, a high risk of cancer and diabetes. So turn off your computer, turn off your TV. Go easy with the junk food, it's high calories. Go for a walk, go for a swim, take a ride on your bike. Work out at the gym, cause how you look ain't the problem, Jack. It's just unhealthy being fat. <laughs> that rap. Thank you. Now you may ask this question, why are we talking about obesity and this is a hunger gathering? Well, I want to tell you that medically this is very, very related. As a matter of fact, articles published in the medical literature, one in particular on uh, food insecurity in the Journal of the American Medical Association clearly links together the lack of food, food insecurity with gaining weight. Obesity is affecting two-thirds of the population. One-third is overweight, one-third is obese. We think these people are all eating too much. But there's a difference between quality and quantity. If you're walking around with two or three bucks in your pocket, you're not going to some elegant organic place and pick up one apple or one bell pepper. You're going to go to a fast food place. You're going to get a burger. You're going to get fries. You're going to get a soda. And what have you got? You got salt, you got sugar, you got fat. And what you do is you're getting more of that fat stored in your belly. And what happens is, after a time, what your body begins to learn is that I'm not eating so well today, and I may not eat tomorrow. And so your body begins to then take the insecurity of it all and store that food that we get as fat. So we carry around in our bellies the nourishment in case we don't get food. And that's what ends up happening. Now this is a big problem. We're talking about, in the United States, one in six people. That means there's nobody in this room that has to drive more than about five minutes in their car to find someone who is food insecure. Now what happens is... Back up. Back up. <laughs> so what ends up happening is the following. The people who don't have access to the food have the following sets of conditions because why does it matter? And why does it matter to you? And it does matter to you. It matters because of the following things. The people who don't have the access to the food end up eating more when they eat. They binge and then they, get, then they don't eat. They binge when they don't eat. All of this leads to health consequences. The kids that aren't getting the food it's sufficiently and their parents end up with twice the likelihood of being ill. They have twice as many sick days as the people who are eating regularly. The second thing that happens is that they end up doing less well in school. There's any number of studies that shows that kids who don't have a breakfast, like the child like the, that you both spoke about, whether it's Max or whether it's the children that you spoke about, these kids don't do as well in school, 
They also have a very hard time behaviorally. They end up having more stresses. Anybody try to sleep when you're hungry? How many of you have ever gotten up at night and gone right to the refrigerator? Imagine if every night of your life you try to go to sleep and you're hungry. You don't sleep well. Well, when you don't sleep well, there's some very important things that happen. Your body starts to make hormones that cause you to be hungrier. And it also fails to turn off the hormones that suppress appetite. So what happens is you make hormones that make you eat more and you also never get full. So you want to eat more. That's why people who don't sleep well can't diet and lose weight. The second thing that happens is people are stressed. People are stressed. Imagine wondering where your next meal is coming from. When we're trying to figure out where our next meal is coming from, we're generally thinking, well, maybe it's takeout night. You know, maybe we'll go to this restaurant. You want Chinese? What would you like? If you don't even know if you're going to have a meal, we're talking about an insecurity of stress that is terrible. And stress leads to increased blood pressure. It leads to diabetes. It leads to heart disease. So we've got that problem. Then you have the issue of stamina. Nobody that can't eat enough is going to ever exercise. And we know that exercise is essential. It's a cornerstone of health all of us need to have. And finally, the school, which I alluded to earlier. No chance in school. So what happens is if you're a person with diabetes, and diabetes is a big problem in this country, by 2020, there will be one third of this nation that's either diabetic or pre-diabetic. That means that they will either have abnormal blood sugars that are not quite normal but not quite diabetic, or they will be frankly diabetic. It's going to cost the country a trillion dollars in health care per year for diabetes in 2020, friends. This is very soon. And we are feeding, the, we are, I hate to say feeding into this problem, but we are part of the issue because of the kids that don't get enough to eat, because of their parents that don't get enough to eat. So I want to express this as a very important thing. And if you are also a person who is diabetic and you know that you need good nutrition, you need the fruits, you need the vegetables, you need the whole grains, you need the things to keep your sugar in line and all you can eat is limited amounts or fast food and junk food and carbohydrates, you can't control the diabetes. If you have to choose between your medicine and your food, if you have to choose between Breakfast and dinner, these are tough choices, folks. None of us wants to ever be in the position to make those kind of ch choices. None of us ever wants our kids to be in those kinds of situations. And it's not only about having not enough money, because about half the people who are food insecure are not in the, really in the, what the country considers poverty line. And data shows that people who have low income but are not food insecure are not nearly as big a problem with obesity as the people who are food insecure. So it's a separate issue. It's not just about having the money. It's about having the food. So I want to tell you today only that I'm honored to be here that this is a major health problem. We are concerned in our nation about two things primarily now, finances and health care. If we have one in six people in the whole country who is having these problems, they're going to be a workforce that doesn't happen. Our urban kids primarily are dropping out of high school. 50% never graduate high school, 50%. This is half the workforce. Who's going to work? if we're losing half of the workforce. And not enough food is contributing to this issue. The second thing is, is the, is the health care. I've already told you what a big health care problem we have, and you all know that. Look what a big deal it is in Congress and all the things we're doing. All of the people here that's, that are food insecure are going to end up twice as many sick days, higher risk of diabetes, higher risk of obesity, higher risk of heart disease, higher risk of high blood pressure. This is going to be an enormous thing. This is where a little bit of change can make a lot of difference. And so I hope today, for those of you who haven't offered a little bit of change, that you will consider supporting the Food Bank, the Feed America, 
and contribute to solving a problem that can be fixed in our lifetime that will affect the financial industry, that will affect healthcare industry, and whether you're an individual who just makes yourself feel good because you're helping, or whether you're a company who says, my company stands for feeding kids, who stands for feeding America. And I, I, I hope that you will consider a little bit of change to make a big difference. I want to thank you for letting me have a few moments to speak with you. I want to thank also Anthony DiBettadeno and say that he has given this year his entire harvest and been contributing for the last seven years to the food bank 60,000 pounds of apples, nearly half a million apples that go into the backpacks of kids clandestinely at school so they never feel bad. So I want to congratulate you, thank you, and have you come up and take over. Anthony, thank you for having me here today.